What up, poppers? Alright, so it's the next day. I think it's Wednesday now. Yeah, it's Wednesday now. Uh, we've been driving since like 5 in the morning from Ventura. I decided to not go visit my mom. Uh, let her, you know, kind of let her feel a little bit of disappointment for once. I know that's probably not like the cool thing to do or whatever, but I just... I wouldn't have been able to go over there and like be nice and happy like I was the last time after what she pulled and she hasn't even apologized yet. Yo, if you do wrong to somebody, just fucking apologize and get it over with so you can fucking move on. I, I have a very hard time being fucked over by somebody and then just like letting time pass and then just being friends again without them acknowledging that they fucking did dirty. I, I don't, it's, I mean, it's just, I don't know. Anyways, so we are um, on our way to Santa Cruz now. I think I'm going to go to the land of the Medicine Buddha. It's like a forest and go hike and stuff for the day and and, uh, and enjoy my day. It's gray. So it's so gray that it's actually like fogging my window. All right, what's up? So we, uh, man, it is gray as shit today, man. God damn. So we, um, we've been driving for a minute. We, uh, it took us like two and a half hours to get to San Luis Obispo. And we've been taking the, the scenic route this whole entire time because it's fucking my favorite thing to do. Look at this little beach house, little, little beach area. It's pretty dope. Nice little cliffs and shit. It's pretty cool, man. So we're just gonna go ahead and walk the dogs, give them a little break, and yeah, later. There's something about taking the scenic route that is just so much more rewarding than taking the, 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 the faster route, you know? And in life, in life I feel like it's the same way, you know, you, you either go straight for the prize and you miss and don't pay attention to how you got there or appreciate it when you do get there. Or you stop, you take the long way, you weave around, you come back around, you make some mistakes and you know, you end up seeing cool shit. You know, you see, you get more experiences and at the end of the day, when you end up where you're going, you appreciate it all the more. So one thing about taking the long way is you definitely have to make sure you, you get gas before you embark on the long way. Let's check this shit out. Fucking five dollars and thirty cents a gallon. I only got $30 worth. I, I mean, Jesus, I'll, I'll get gas later or something. I think we might go get some food right there. Or maybe just have a bowl of cereal. Um, probably just have a bowl of cereal. But yeah, that's what we're doing. We're in Big Sur right now, uh, trying to get some gas. And then, I don't know, we might try to go find a trail. We got this free like, pamphlet thing about this area. So, well, let's see what's up. Shit, it wasn't so funny. Made a promise to the homies, nobody go home. Look how far we came. Still the throwing dirt on my name. But it never worried my So we so we stopped at a place called Salmon Creek. Check this shit out. It's right on the inside of this bend of the the one freeway. PCH. And look at this, it's like waterfalls and shit in here. It's gonna be dope, man. I love hiking. Should we go up or down? Let's go down first. Da 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 da. We're going down. Woo! Yeah, I don't know exactly how to get into that spot because there was a bunch of dead ends, and so we uh, we're getting back in the car, and we're gonna head more north. Okay, bye. Fucking nuts. That's why I love driving this. this uh, the one up the coast. Monterey here. It's probably the most beautiful drive in the world. It's all gray and shit. It's still beautiful out. It's amazing. 
fill up the shit. Man, look at this shit. Fucking beautiful, man. Look at this. Hartington Cove. It's the first time I've actually stopped here. I've seen this place a couple of times driving up the coast before, but son of a bitch if it isn't beautiful. Lucy! Come on, slowpoke! This is literally exactly what I needed out of this trip, man. It's just a change of scenery, you know? I'm always at the beach. I'm literally walking to the beach as we speak, but at least it's like, you know, in the middle of this shit. <laughs> what the fuck? This is awesome. Look at this. Unreal. Just fucking beautiful, man. Yeah, I'm, you know, out here trying to clear my head. I mean, dropping tabs doesn't really help clear your head exactly, but... <laughs> but, you know, fucking... Trying to, trying to at least cut back on the weed. I only brought a very little bit of weed with me. I got about two blunts left and then a couple of dabs and that's about it. And I, I'm gonna try to not buy any more up here. I'm gonna try my fucking... Oh my god. Holy shit. I'll talk more about addiction in later videos, but I, uh, I'm, I'm an ex-opiate addict, and I say ex instead of recovering because I'm never touching that shit again, but I'm still an addict, you know, everybody's an addict at something, and uh, damn, dude, look at these foods, son of a bitch, and I'm kind of addicted to changing my state of mind. I, I am. I just am. You know, you're having a bad day. I don't know. Psychedelics are fun, man. And, you know, and weed is kind of a psychedelic, but it's also kind of a depressant. And so I'm trying to trying to cut that out because it's it's fucking with my days. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to be a productive, productive, productive and trying to like get at it. And weed gives me excuses that I don't need. So yeah, I've been smoking since I was 16. <laughs> it's like enough, you know what I mean? It's enough. So anyways, that's what we're working on. That's what we're doing. We're out here. Just, I mean, what the fuck? It doesn't get much prettier than that. All right, so I want to start trying to tell the story of how I ended up in a van in the first place. Um, because that was definitely not the plan to begin with in the beginning of of uh, COVID is definitely not the plan is to uh, switch over to van life. So, uh, basically, <laughs> it stems from the fact that the last 15 years have just been a completely wasted opiate addiction. Um, and then that coupled with uh, my dad allowing me to stay with him and then me being a fucking nightmare, I'm sure. And, you know... We were sick of each other in the beginning of the year. Neither of us knew that a pandemic was coming. So he planned to move out. I was supposed to find a place. And then in the beginning of the year, pandemic hit. I lost my job, had no savings and stuff, but he wanted to push through with it. So it happened, right? And so we ended up um, taking our, at the time we had a uh, Nissan Altima that I had this was my first car back after 10 years of not having a license. So, like, the first week and a half, I, like, crashed into something in the back and then crashed into something in the front, and then I just treated it like shit for the next two years. Uh, ended up deciding to not make the payments on it anymore when COVID hit, and I literally just left it in the hotel parking lot that I stayed in for two weeks. So we, we ended up leaving the house right around my birthday time, staying at a hotel for two weeks and then um, I couldn't afford the hotel anymore so then we switched over to an Airbnb that I found in a really really nice neighborhood called Hillcrest in San Diego god it was so nice had a little path and everything for the dogs and stuff and uh, in the canyon system that we can go hiking in and so I did that for like three months it was 40 bucks a day so it was $1,200 a month the guy was super cool uh, you know, he let me pay weekly, which was really nice because I'm not great at, at saving money and, you know, managing my money. And uh, it was going great. Like, I, I was doing great for three months. And then, um, and all this time, I'm trying to maintain my Pokemon Go 
YouTube channel that I had before this, right? And uh, and and he ends up having to move out. The, my landlord at the time had to move out of the house, so I had to move out of the house. And then now I'm in my Audi, and and before I left the, I'm sorry, before I left the hotel, my mom came down real quick, gave me a little bit of money to buy an Audi. So I I, I got this Audi. It's like a, a, a Audi wagon. And I set up the back and, and everything, so I was able to sleep in the back of that. But that was like my first time ever sleeping in a car, so I was kind of frantically trying to keep in Airbnbs and stuff. And eventually, I'm just like, damn, dude, I'm wasting a lot of money on these Airbnbs when I don't even really need to. Like, I'm not getting anything out of it. I, I am comfortable enough in the Audi, you know? So then I started to kind of really accept the fact that, hey, you know what, this is actually not that bad. And, uh, and I started rolling with the Audi and I went on a little road trip last year too. And then when I came back, I, I didn't pay attention to that Audi at all. So I ran it into the ground. I came back, that thing broke down, um, uh, was the lowest point of my life. Like my car broke down, my battery, my battery died. My phone battery was dying. Nobody in my family was helping me. It was really tragic. It was scary really, to be honest with you. And finally I got the Audi fixed, really just like $200, fixed it up just a little bit, drove it for two weeks, made $2,200 and bought this van and then started the journey with this van, which has been a repair nightmare, but I'm going to stick it out and build it out and use this van as my very first van life van. So that's part one of the story of how I became in a van. Uh, That's good. See you guys later.